Welcome back. Today we're going to tie a Rainbow Riffle variant. Uh, this is a spin from the original. Um, it came about when I was trying to put a triple together. I never quite got the taper right, but then I changed it out. Um, the taper was good on, on the double, on, on the standard. Um, you know, and it just really substitutes the marabou tail for a deceiver tail. But uh, still working on the triple, trying to get that taper right. I like the swim, but the overall profile didn't quite fit, so I'm still, still messing around with that one, trying to get it squared away. But for now, we're gonna go through and do the variant. Like I said, this is just the um, two hooks. There we go, get that set in there. Hopefully here later this year, I get some more time to take a look at uh, the design on that one and get that one dialed in. Cause like I said, I, I like the swim that I got from it, but the, the taper and the profile wasn't quite right. So starting on this, we're just going with a size four MFC 7050. And then I'm gonna find two feathers here if I can, I'm down to the very end of this pack. So, or very end of that. help there so let's see it's a little bit on the short side let me see if we like that that's a little bit on the short side I'm I may wind up having to go to something to uh, just a pack there but some some of those packs that I have don't quite match the color on the marabou as well and this one's still off a little bit on the color but it's closer than the majority of the ones that i have so we're going to go with this these two should do right here so i'm just going to take those two tails or i'm going to take those two feathers and i'm going to turn them against one another um, that way it's going to be one sleek tail going back and as you can see right there we've got that nice deceiver tail section and I'm going to take that about to the uh, arm on the Renzetti and I'm just going to take and peel this stuff back I'm going to leave a little bit of feathers on the very end something that I'm able to catch with the thread give me a little bit more security once it's tied in there and then just set that right on the top get a couple of loose wraps take those tails directly back they lay back nice and flat for you right there. So then I'm just going to finish this off. Set that in like so. Get a couple of good wraps on there. Make sure that that's nice and secure. And we're set. Then we're going to go on to our body material. Which if you've watched any of the previous ones. Um, well, not all of the previous ones. The first one that I did was still with the dubbing loop on this but the previous ones I detailed how to build these bodies on the brush how to build these brushes for the bodies um, but if you don't want to take the time and build your dubbing brush uh, you can just take some Harris ice dub and some Senyo shaggy dub and throw that in a dubbing loop and it'll get you the same result so we're gonna take this now and make sure that my hands out of the way there we go and i'm just going to make some open loop wraps on this they're not necessarily one right on top of the next um, they're not the tightest wraps but i'm also not spacing them so far open to where i'm going to have a lot of gaps and everything so don't stack them right on top of one another but don't space them out to where you're going to see your gaps a lot and then I just take that right to the front about every second or third wrap. I'll go in there and make sure that I clear out that shaggy dub. And then I'll give that a quick pull. Nothing real, real tight on that pull, just enough to anchor it down into place. And then we'll take that, tie that off, and then trim this out. get that out of our way make sure that everything's setting how we want it if you have a couple of these that are a little bit on the long side 
go ahead and trim them off, but for the most part, I don't get too awful concerned about them. Um, they don't really cause a lot of problems if they're on the long side. So then I just want to clean that up, give myself a nice base to tie in some marabou. And we're going to go with an over and an under wing. We're going to have olive on the top and cream underneath. So I'm just going to pick a piece here. This is Wooly Bugger Marabou. It, it makes it a little bit thicker and it fills the profile out a little bit better than if you were to go with a straight uh, blood quill. So I'm just going to take a section right like that. I'm going to peel that off from the side. And then I'm going to take my thumb and my finger and I'm just going to bust those tips off a little bit. So it evens it up slightly. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I just want it somewhat even. And then I'm going to trim that out and then lay that right over the top like so. So then I want to just capture that with a couple of loose wraps and then pull down tight, get in and get it secured to the hook. And I've got some shaggy dub wanting to get in the way there. And then once I have that, I'm going to take a couple of wraps right in the front to make sure that that eye is nice and clear. And then I'm just going to trim that stuff like so. Same thing, I'll just go right over the top of that. And a little bit of fluff right there, but no stem or anything, so it's not going to be the end of the world. It'll clear out. Now I want to go with the bottom section. I'm going to take the white and that feather looks pretty good right there. I'm actually going to use the tips of it, I think. Let's see what it looks like once I get it next to the other one there. Yeah, that looks good. We've got a nice full feather there, real, really webby. Um, fills that, or it fits that profile nicely. So I'm going to take that, set it right on the top, go one, two, get a third loose wrap, make sure that everything's sitting where I want it, and then once again a couple of wraps right in front. Got something moving around out here. And we'll just take that, peel everything back, and then you can see it gives you that nice full profile or full section on that underneath and it builds some bulk on the body, but then you also have some dimension as well with that uh, um, shaggy dub and everything else. So I just want to take now and do a quick whip finish on this. Two, three. Everything's looking pretty good to this point. Now if you want to, you can go ahead and color up your thread a little bit. I'll take some olive here and I'm just going to dress that up right on the top, just kind of tone that white down, but then we still have the white underneath. Completely don't have to do that step if you don't want to. It's going to be covered by some more marabou from our skirt on the uh, front hook, but if you want to and you suffer from OCD like I do, go ahead and do it. So now we'll throw our wire in there, just 19 strand beetle on, as always. And then we'll get two red beads. Set that off to the side, we're ready for the front hook. So the front hook is a size 2 MFC 7050, and before I move any further, I know I'm missing something here. I need some lateral scale. One and oh, that's quite.
arm stretch. Some ice wing that I forgot to get prior to sitting down to film this. So we're all set now. Now we're just going to get a thread base down on our front hook. Advance that to the back. Run that through one more time and then just kind of open loop this. Having a thread base down is going to keep your connection wire from slipping on you. Um, it definitely helps out a little bit. Um, I don't go too awful crazy making sure that those wraps are spaced perfectly or anything. I just want to have a thread base down, something to get a little bit of a grip out of that. And then we'll take and tie in our connecting wire. Check our distances right there. Everything's looking pretty good on that connection portion. And then I want to go one wrap right behind it and then really start wrenching down on that. And then just take your connection wire, making sure that it's running parallel, not crossed over or anything. And then we'll take that wire all the way to, well, not all the way to the front, but we'll get it up toward the front where we're going to be building our head and then double it over and then just run that back. So once again, double that, run it back. Now we're gonna build our skirt section. So I'm just gonna take some white marabou this is blood quill for the bottom portion. And I'm gonna use two, one on each side. I'm gonna set that into where it follow or where it travels back into the marabou from the rear hook. So you have a nice seamless transition through them. And then get that secured into place. Same thing on the opposite side. We're gonna go with another plume of white blood quill. Set that off. And then measure this out against the first one. Everything's nice and even. And then we'll get that set in, get it secured. Now I'm just gonna take those and trim them right here. I've got a little bit of a bump right there. We'll just clean that up a little and then I'll smooth that transition with that olive marabou that I'm gonna put on the top and that'll smooth everything out there. So same as before, we're just gonna take that chunk trim off that and then bust that top portion. That gives you a nice full stack of marabou there. And then once again, I just wanna lean that right into that portion to where it has that nice transition covering up our connection. We got a nice full body on this, a lot of motion from the marabou once it's in the water. Um, really gives this fly a, a, a really good swim and a good profile. So there we have that. Everything's looking good to this point. And then we're gonna go back to our um, body material for our um, dubbing brush. We're gonna get that set in, get it secured and then take that right to where we double back on our connection wire. Get that set into place and then same as before, take this section and just wrap this right around until we get to our tie off point. Making sure that you peel this shaggy dub out of the way, you don't wanna trap a ton of it. It'll wind up really taken away from the fly on this a little bit. If it's all 
folded up and twisted and everything. Um, it takes away from some of the motion and you don't get the color break that you're after. And then also if you have a bunch of loops on this front section to where it's folded over, sometimes that back hook will come around and get caught on the loop and it'll file that fly up. So you want to make sure that you get those cleared out as best as possible. There we go. And then I'll typically just take my scissors and run that through there, making sure that if there are any loops, I'm going to catch them and then just unhook everything. So I'm going to take, trim a little bit of this, get that out of my way, and everything's set. So now we have room for the head on this one, and then also we have room for the laser dub head, which we're going to put right here. But then we're going to go with over and under wings once again um, to fill the fly out and get that profile right. So, let's see if I can find a good plume of marabou here. That's not it. This should do. So I'm going to take this piece off of the side that those tips don't look quite as good as I like or as I would like them. So they're a little on the sparse side. So I'm going to take that off the side and then once again just bust this, bust those tips up with my fingers. And then we have a nice full piece of marabou once again for our underwing. And get that tied in make sure that we like the distance that's a little bit on the long side actually that's a little bit on the long side we'll just take that out there we go that looks a little better that was going to be a little bit on the long side, so it was going to throw the taper and everything off. So I just called an audible and peeled that back just a touch. So one important thing that I want to highlight here, when you are tying in your materials, because we're going to be putting some eyes on this fly, um, you want to make sure that when you're tying these in that you keep this section as even as possible. Don't go cutting your marabou off at the halfway point and then you wind up with this full section and then it's a drop off to a bare hook. You're going to wind up with a bump there and what's going to happen when you do that is when you go to glue your eyes on it's going to kick to that side because it's not even on that uh, platform that you're trying to stick it to. Keep that as consistent as possible and then your eyes are going to set easily for you and they're going to be even throughout. Um, they'll, stay, they'll stay on the fly a lot longer as well. So now we're going to go into a piece of just lateral scale and we're going to run this back into the start of our deceiver tail by probably a quarter to a half of an inch. Madison sees something outside. So there we go, running right down the center and then just double this over and then bring it on the other side, making sure that it's running laterally and then just trim that off even from the, from the other one. So we've got both of our tails or both of our lateral lines running perfectly down the center of our fly. And then we're going to go into some ice wing. This is a bait fish mix. And we just want a very minimal amount of this. So I'm going to take and just kind of dust that, those ends up. And this just adds another bit of a dimension to the fly. It adds some color break and uh, gives you a little bit of extra flash as well. So once again with this, because there's 
a non-compressible material. I'm working that all the way to the front so I'm not going to have any bumps with my eyes. When I tie them on, I'm going to stop that just shy of the eye of the hook, making sure that I keep this nice, even platform to glue my eyes onto. And then we'll just push our scissors right through that and it gives you that nice color breakup and uh, like I said, adds a little bit of extra dimension. So now I want to take one last overwing and this is going to be back to the olive. There's one that I like right there and that looks solid. I'm going to peel all this short stuff off on the bottom and then find the marabou, find the sweet spot on this marabou that I really like. I'm going to peel that out, bust those tips off once again. And that gives us a nice full piece of marabou. Those dogs are going nuts in there. I don't know what the heck they see out there. Alright, moving that forward once again. about something in there but there you get again you can see we've got that nice platform right there by just keeping our materials consistent and making sure that we run that all the way to the front we've got a nice platform to put our eyes on so now I'm just going to take this laser dub olive and white and set one there and one there, and I gotta finish this fly up quick because I gotta figure out what the heck's wrong with them dogs in there. Who knows what the hell? Probably a leaf blowing in the yard or something she's freaking out about. There's no telling. So, we're gonna take our olive. I go back and forth on what I do with these. Sometimes I'll mix them with the uh, I'll mix them with brown and black. With this one, I'm going to keep just a straight olive. The colors off just slightly, but uh, overall, it's it's a pretty close mix. So then I'm going to throw in another piece of laser dub and then work this to the front. So I'm gonna have a gap right there for my eyes to set in. I'm gonna take this. My goodness, they're crazy out there. Oh, I hear some kids out in the driveway. That's probably what they're all worked up about. Jeez. They are not happy in there. Alright, last piece of laser dub here. So you can see that gap that we have that we're building on this head. Oh my god. There, we're good. The gap that we have from just using those two spaced out stacks is going to give us the perfect amount of space to put these seven millimeter eyes on. So I just want to peel that stuff back, make sure that it's standing straight up and down, and we have a nice section on both sides to put these eyes in. One of these days, I'm going to have a dang shock to tie in and it's not going to have any distractions. A fella can dream, I suppose. A fella can dream. So now I'm just taking and putting a little bit of glue. This is just a uh, Loctite gel. I'm going to set that right in there. And then like I said before, I'm, gonna, I'm using 7 millimeter fish skull eyes, these are fire, but whichever color 
and style of eye you like to use, go ahead. But th these are the ones that I tend to gravitate toward. So then we'll set that on there. Both of them are set. And then I just want to go on both sides and then I'm just putting a slight amount of pressure. I'm not squeezing to the point to where it's gonna force glue out from the sides if you have too much on there. Just enough pressure to get that glue to meet in between the two eyes and then it forms like a solid seal. Um, I, I very rarely have these things pop off on me. Very rarely, they usually stick pretty good. So then I just wanna take and trim this laser dub on the top and the bottom just fill that out and then push this right through giving a nice trim on that bottom you have a nice angle that's a little bit on the long side there I need to touch that up There we go. That looks a little better. Then once again, back to the marker. I'm just gonna take this, touch up that little bit of white on the top. And that is a completed rainbow riffle variant. We'll give that a quick spin so you can see the fly in its entirety. Now, let me fix that tail. There we go. You can see the fly in its entirety. It has a nice profile to it. Very good swim. Um, the deceiver tail um, does add a little bit different of a dimension to it, and it swims a little bit differently than the standard. Um, just marabou tail. I kind of like fishing this one a little bit more. It darts and dives around uh, throughout the water a little bit better but it does give up some motion that the marabou tail has. Um, but this one, like I said, it, it will dart and uh, scoot around a, a lot different than what the standard one does. It's a little bit more slender as it goes back, not as much bulk in the tail, a little bit less weight because you're not having a bunch of wet marabou back there, and it does swim a little bit differently. It has a little bit more of a kill, tail kick to it. Um, but both of them, I, I, still, I still fish both styles a good bit um, it's just you know sometimes you want a little bit more weight less less kick in the back other times you want a little bit more of a wiggle but um, like I said I, I, I don't think that I fish one more than I fish the other I do prefer to fish this one a little bit more though um, but that's the end of my rambling on that it sounds like the dogs are calming down a little bit too so that is fitting right at the end of the video they shut up but if you guys have questions or comments on this one uh, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks as always for watching and we'll catch you on the next fly.